We're going to start on some pretty negative news, unfortunately, and that's oh, about uh, yeah, it's about Spotify's uh, new advertising tool. This is called Marquee. We discussed it before a couple of episodes back. You know, we were on about oh, Spotify's got the new advertising service. It's going to be really good. They're going to open up a two-sided marketplace. <laughs> Artists will be able right. to pay to get advertising music on there, but it's very, very expensive. It turns out they've been rolling out the sort of information to like major labels, like as part of like you know, given the information pack. And it's going to cost it's going to cost fifty five cents per click. So every time a user clicks on this brand new music for you pop up alert, that's fifty five cents. And they're recommending a minimum buy in of like five thousand dollars. So if you work, if you do the math, they're recommending, or do you have to do five thousand dollars? They're recommend recommending a minimum of five thousand dollars. Okay. So I guess gotcha. there probably is there probably is an actual like you know cap that so it probably is so you probably can spend a little bit less than that but I don't think I think they're not going to let you spend like you know five hundred dollars probably right I, because their last their pro, primary advertising service last I remember I think they took it down to two hundred dollars two hundred fifty dollars at yeah. one point but it might be something higher. They definitely have a minimum, which is different than Facebook and Instagram advertising and things of that nature. Exactly. So they're recommending a minimum of $5,000. I can't imagine the minimum is, is that low. Um, yeah, I but, saw you did the math. What did that, what did that add up to, to again? So people can get an idea of what that actually looks like. So it's 55 cents per click. If you've got $5,000 is your budget you're spending. Um, that means that 9,000 people will stream a new track or album. So they stream one song of yours with the current rate <laughs> at zero point zero zero three six dollars per stream. That means you'll get thirty two dollars forty in return in terms of royalties. And if they stream a whole album instead of one song, it'd be three hundred twenty four dollars. But that's nowhere near the five thousand dollars you spent on the campaign. All right, so five thousand dollars, I get three hundred forty two dollars back. Only if they no, listen to a whole no, album. No, I get yeah. thirty. Yeah, too, if they yeah. listen to that one song, I get $34 yeah. back because it only got shown to 9,000 people. That's yeah. just such a crazy digital uh, marketing ad spin for considering that reach, that potential reach, really, mm -hmm. right? Not even guaranteed in terms of people who actually click through, it seems, um, just based on what I read. And then, yes, you, you stream a whole album based off of that those calculations, which were 10 songs. So 10, each person streamed 10 songs. Obviously, that would be 342, multiplying that 34 times 10. That right there is, uh, I know, discouraging for artists, again, to hear something like that. But we have to also remember again and again that music is looked at as a loss leader, right? Um, yeah. I think I even saw a quote that Wendy Day posted by uh, Troy Carter that um, the other day where essentially it was saying that music is makes a lot of money for everything except for music itself. It was something makes sense. to the nature yeah. of that, right? Yeah. So people are expecting to spend this money and then make money off of the attention that they gain through the music. Music is essentially marketing at this point. But the most interesting aspect for this that I think I want to talk about is I saw a professor kind of stated how this was just new age payola. Yeah. And, you know, in the same way you would be paying for a radio spot, now instead we're for one, putting this pay rate as something that only a certain level can even afford to do. That's almost, so that's like exclusivity without stating it, right? Exclusivity through pricing. And then of course you're gonna see people always do top down in most of these things because you have to test it in a control group before you release it to the masses, even if that happens. But at the end of the day, because of the finite space, people get or, or the lack of recognition of the finite space, people actually get it twisted. Yes, th there's this democratization of, of, of experience and, and information that happens because of the internet and this ability for everyone to chance and get placed because the internet is perceivably limitless when we think about st storage, right? However, yeah. attention is still finite. And that's the part that people have to remember. So when you have this display, because essentially they're saying, hey, music, we're recommending for you. It's going to be a pop-up ad. That's that's all it is. It's really a pop-up <laughs> at, yeah, at the end of the day. Yeah, it's nothing right? fancy, you no. know, it, it It's spam, <laughs> as we would like to say, at the, like especially if you think about the beginning of the web days when pop-up was, pop-ups were crazy, right? Mm -hmm. um, 
And so, but only, but for one, Spotify is going to try to maintain the user experience because if there's too many pop-ups, that's just going to kill user experience. So that makes it even more finite, right? The, even the ability to do it. And then on an auction-based system, that's also going to drive up prices because at the end of the day, we have to, we have to think about the fact that record labels are going to have these budgets and they're going to, they're going to want to do it. So even if you as an indie artist want to get involved in something like this and end up with a budget like this, you're, you're competing with these prices. So even on a, a free auction system, I can see the prices driving up um, to be yeah, pretty, pretty, pretty much not worth it considering what I see in Spotify, but that's where Spotify yeah. kind of is in the nature of their company, which we'll talk about a little bit later. Uh, we talked about it earlier, but we'll talk about it a little bit later in this episode. I want to know if you have any other thoughts when it comes to this Spotify payola situation. Of course, we'll continue to update on it, but if, well, oh, actually, I should, probably shouldn't have said it like that, but this Spotify, what are they calling the system again? Uh, marquee. Marquee, it's yeah. Marquee tool, yeah. <laughs> yeah. What, what I did see that just before we hopped on the call was that um, they're only going to show up pop-up ads on your account like one per day maximum and only two per week see? maximum. So you're not even going to yeah. see, you're only going to see two per week and you can turn it off as well if you're a premium subscriber. So again, see? you know, I'll see. It's, it's, it's I, I think it's quite, they seem to think it's quite valuable. Like I just found like a few stats that so they reckon that, um, where's the statistics now? I'm trying to think. They said that, you know, like 21.7% 21, 21. increase in engagement that people would click through, you know, if they saw this advert. So they seem to put a lot of, they're putting a lot of like backing behind it, which is interesting. Right. It doesn't seem that well, much of a big deal. I'd like to, so of course I, I need to, I, I do want to express this angle of things because sometimes speaking so much with any artist, I can even get convinced into thinking this way where, Hey, the only thing that matters is how low can your click through and how much do your views um, get and how many, like all those pay, pay, fo focusing on those surface level numbers. But what I can say in the full marketing stack, it does have value. Right. Yeah. So this might not be your leading thing. This might not be the thing you put the first money in, but especially as you build and you have a certain audience and you already have a certain infrastructure in place, I do see value for a platform like this for an established artist or artist that's still on, on, on their way up, but they already have a certain level of buzz. So you're recapturing attention. You already have a certain level of brand recognition. I wouldn't use it as much for ground level um, discovery. I, no. I'd use other methods, playlisting, ads, all that kind of stuff for ground level discovery. This right, because the, just the investment will be too high. But, you know, continued brand awareness, new track is out where people are already aware of you, especially a, a lot of times the way, the way they run your their ads, if it's anywhere, anything like their other platform and the way they run those ads is you can only do it on very limited amount of profiles. I believe yeah. you can do it with your users, mm -hmm. right? Um, I don't know if you are able to completely target in a way where it would make sense to be for a super discovery um, engine as well. So there is value to it. Um, I don't want to completely poo-poo Spotify. Um, there is there is value somewhere in the marketing stack, but most artists, most particularly indie artists, should not be looking at this as something that's going to be one of their primary tools in their chamber or anything anything current or even potential in the near future um, in terms of building up their career. But that's what concerns me the most is obviously a couple of months ago we were saying, oh, it's just the first of many, they're going to roll out all these other features, but because they want to increase their bottom line and uh, yeah, I'm just worried that all the features are going to be out of the Indies like price range. That's what concerns me the most is that all, all these tools are going to come in now on Spotify and they're not going to have to...